Hi everybody. Today I have a phenomenal lasagna recipe that you are going to absolutely love. It's easy to make. It doesn't make a lot of mess. Let's get cooking. All right, let's get cooking. As always, I'm just going to heat up the pan. We need a deep dish. I am going to use my cast iron Dutch oven or you could use something like a stock pan pot. I don't have an interest in becoming a Hollywood film maker, so I don't edit my videos. They're very quick and to the point because of upload times. I press play and I press pause, but you are going to love this recipe. So we're going to let this heat up and we're going to put in a little bit of peanut oil. I use peanut oil because I don't want any other flavors going into my meat sauce other than the ingredients that you're going to see here today. So I just sort of coat the bottom of the pan as it heats up and I will be stepping in and out of the frame to press pause. This little cast iron I actually use as a spoon holder. All right, now that we have the pan heated up, depending on how much meat you want in your sauce, uh, for the lasagna. You're going to want a pound to a pound and a half of, I use ground sirloin. Ground sirloin to me um, is the best of the ground beefs. It is more flavorful, very little fat. Not that I'm worried about fat, but we don't want a lot of fat in the sauce. I'm just going to wash my hands off. Ground beef and ground shuck. I should probably turn on the fan. I hope that doesn't hurt the video. We'll use our meat chopper here. Get it going. All right, and then two to three cloves of garlic. Minced right into the pan. I've moved, hopefully, this is on the video. I've moved the meat off to the side, so you want the garlic to sort of toast because you don't want a very strong garlicky, garlicky flavor. You want more of a toasted garlic taste. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to chop this up with my meat chopper and brown it. Obviously you guys know how to brown, so I will press pause. So hopefully you can see that we're cooking up the ground sirloin. There's just a little bit of rawness left in it that we want to go. I'm going to talk about a couple of things. We're going to add four cups of marinara. I used to do three, but I find that, especially if I don't eat it and if I store the lasagna, the pasta tends to soak in or absorb the sauce. So I use a marinara sauce. You're gonna use 32 ounces and then another 24 to get your four cups for this. And then um, you'll see in the rest of the recipe why what I use the rest for. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a half a cup of red wine. And I'm a big proponent that if you wouldn't drink it after, with your nice dinner or just to relax, then you wouldn't put it in your recipe. Don't use cooking wine. Cooking wine is awful. Awful. And I, if you don't believe me, I, I, I challenge you to pour yourself a a glass while you're cooking or while you're relaxing of cooking white wine or red wine and you, uh, I think you'll agree with me. So in goes a half a cup and this is literally a half a cup not a half a cup of the wine glass. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cook this down so that it reduces and 
almost all of the liquid is gone, but it is going to add to the flavor of the meat. Now, what I'm using for wine, Sangiovese. Um, you want a very bold, earthy flavored wine. Uh, another wine I usually put in is uh, Carbonera. Carbonera is another wine that's very earthy, very robust. Um, so I recommend that for your meat sauce. This is what you want. You want a very earthy, flavorful, bold meat sauce that will combine with the uh, pasta and the other delicate ingredients. So I'm going to press pause and we're going to cook that down. Oh, it's beautiful out on the property, out on the homestead. Hopefully you can see now um, it's reduced nicely. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in our two cups of marinara. I got four foot wind chimes outside and they're just sounding beautiful. Another two cups of marinara. So four total. And give that a stir so the meat doesn't start to burn. Now this will start splattering. You're probably going to want to turn the heat down a little bit. To this, we are going to add half a teaspoon of sugar, half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of black pepper, and a quarter teaspoon of thyme. Now normally I put in fresh thyme. But when I was at the grocery store, I forgot to buy it. So I'm using um, dried thyme from my spice rack. So what we want to do here is mix it all together. And then we're going to take, now this is fresh parsley. I don't know, this chopped up, this is probably eighth of a teaspoon, maybe a quarter teaspoon, depends, maybe a little bit more. So we're going to incorporate, I, per, I also prefer Italian parsley, but the grocery store didn't have it at the time. So we're just going to mix this up. And then cover it. All right, so we're going to check on this. It's simmering nicely. One, once again, a pound to a pound and a half of ground sirloin. Depending on how meaty you want the sauce. Four cups of marinara sauce. About a quarter of a teaspoon to half a teaspoon of parsley. Half a teaspoon of sugar. Half a teaspoon of salt. Half a teaspoon of pepper. And a quarter teaspoon of thyme. Now we're just going to let that simmer for about five, six more minutes. In the meantime, I'm going to start setting up to show you how to make the cheese sauce. All right, I'm going to give the meat sauce just one more stir. Let's see how hot that is. Okay. I lift the lid slowly because I know it's going to be splattering. And then I start stirring before I... Should have got out of the way for you. So I lift the lid slowly enough to get the spoon in there. And then I begin stirring before I lift the lid. That way all the splattering stops. And then there's less to clean up. Because I don't know anybody who likes cleaning up. I know I don't. All right, I'm going to give this one last stir. This looks really good. All right, I'm going to turn off the heat. I like to clean as I go. <clears throat> now for the cheese sauce, you're going to want a big bowl. I can't tell you, I'll watch people cook and they use the smallest containers. They have all these ingredients and then there's like very little room to actually 
do what you need to do. So with that, um, what we're going to do is the cheese sauce. So with a whisk and your bowl, you're going to take 16 ounces of ricotta. I've heard it pronounced many different ways. And then this one is 16 ounces of cottage cheese. And I can hear it already. Heretic, you never put cottage cheese in lasagna. Well, trust me on this one. You're gonna like this. Unstrained, put, all, put it all in there. One egg, large, farm fresh. No shells. And then to that we're going to add about half a cup shredded mozzarella. I use low moisture. I would prefer to shred it myself because shredded cheese has a coating on it so it doesn't stick together. And then like I said, if you would not drink the wine while you're mixing your ingredients or enjoying the meal do not put it in your food and then the other thing i didn't show you in the beginning of the video is i had fresh oregano fresh cilantro for those of you that don't like it you can leave that out and then the remaining parsley i've chopped it i'm not a great chopper but let me show you let me show you how bad i am like bad all right sorry just Put it together like that. I do not do this all the time. Kudos to people who have taken up the profession and do this every day and practice it and get graded on it, but I do not chop all that much. And then you just take all of that mixed together, put it in there, get the noodles out of the way, and then start mixing it up. And I know you can't see or video, like I said, I don't, I don't want to be a Hollywood movie maker, and I'm not going to hire a Hollywood movie maker. But you want to incorporate everything. And again, big bowl. Lots of room to make mistakes. Get sloppy. You know, we're all human. It's all real. Use whatever you have. Use a big stock pot if that's all you have instead of mixing bowls and whatnot. That is the cheese sauce. So I'm going to press pause and set up the next step. All right, I think I'm good to go. This is the tricky part. So with the amount of meat and well, the wine cooked off and four cups of marinara, I'm going to say there's about six cups of sauce in here. This is going to get divided into thirds. So I've got my two cup Pyrex dish here. Let me show you what we do. So what we're going to do is, this is the best part. We're going to cook it in a crock pot. And I, I pulled this, hopefully you guys can see it. And even better part is, Get a liner, line this, and I'll show you the trick and why it's so important that you do this. A, it helps keep everything clean, but B, it's just, it, you'll, it's fantastic. All right, so you take a cup of marinara and you coat the bottom. And I forgot my spatula. All right, like I said, I clean as I go. Boy, I hope this video doesn't get too long because my last one took five hours to upload. Now I live in the middle of nowhere. I live in the middle of a national forest and I could get high speed internet, but I don't watch TV. And other than uploading videos, it would just be a waste of money and I'd just be giving my hard earned money to somebody else. All right, so what you do is you take a cup of marinara Coat the bottom, that's important. And then you're gonna use regular good old fashioned 
pre-made pasta noodles. Now, yeah, you could make your own, which would be even better, but do not use the instant one, or I think they're like no bake or something like that. These are regular, and you're gonna use about three to four for each layer. A little bit more, I like to use more, and you're gonna crack them up so that they fit. Now I know if I had an assistant, they would be taking the can, or if I had more money, I would have a camera, because I've been told that. One of my good friends said, you know, your camera angles aren't the greatest. I get that. But we're all human. We're all, this, is all, this is real life. So, I'm just taking bits and making sure that it's pretty much covered everywhere. Make sure it's there. All right, now what you do is you're going to top that pasta with some meat sauce. So let me get some meat sauce. Probably a waste of video time, I apologize. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take approximately a third of your meat sauce and you're gonna pour it over the noodles that you just put down. And this is only like, I don't know, fourth, fifth, no, sixth, seventh video, so I'm not used to, used to this, so bear with me. I hope you enjoy this. Click subscribe and notifications and leave a comment too. Also leave a comment. That's, I guess, what you need to do for the algorithms for it to get pushed out even more. All right, so next um, you're going to top it with the shredded mozzarella. Now it says anywhere, from, you know, like a three quarters of a cup to a cup. I like cheese. So I just want to make sure that pretty much all of the sauce is coated. And somebody made fun of me because I moved the camera. I'll do this. Hopefully, here. I'll get behind the camera so I know. So there, you got your first layer of marinara, a layer of noodles, a layer of mozzarella, and now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your cheese sauce that you made, and you're gonna put it down in about, you're gonna, you're gonna divide this by three too. You're gonna put it down spaced evenly around all the corners because then when you spread you're not dragging all of it over itself and then you're ruining the layers that you're making so now you're just going to take the cheese sauce that you mixed up and you're going to spread i think i can use a little bit more Good. Now, in order to save time, I'm going to press pause after this next layer because we're actually going to do three layers. So now you take another layer of noodles and now it should be high. This is a six quart crock pot. Now you should be able to use a whole noodle. Maybe start cracking off. It's not quite fitting like that. Use the other bits that are from other layers. Try and angle them in like that. All right, now we're gonna put in another layer of meat sauce. I don't know if I should film this or not. Yeah, I suppose. And then I'll press pause, I'll finish it off. Yep, this is going to work out just about right. So there's about two cups left there. So now we take the meat sauce. 
poured over the pasta. Push it around so that it covers all of the pasta. And believe it or not, so this is so hot, you know, your pasta is already cooking. It's already starting to cook. Put that back. Put more mozzarella. Make sure it's everywhere. Now you're going to take another third of this again so I'm putting it I'm placing it around so that I don't have to drag it all over because once you do you're just gonna make a mess and all right that's for the last layer plus a little bit more so now you just take this spread it around and I'm gonna go press pause and finish up the layers. All right, I brought out, I think, 11 or 12 pieces of pasta. This is what I have left. So I used, I don't know, 10 and a half, 11 and a half. Now we're gonna go get some, the lat, this will be the top layer. Save time. I'm not going to do it, but I would literally, you know, I think relatively cool enough to hold. I would scrape everything out of here. Here's another. I know you, you cast iron purists. You're saying heretic. You're using a tomato-based recipe in your cast iron. I clean as I go, so this won't be staying in here very long. So the acid won't be eating my seasoning and I season every time all right so we got that at this point it really doesn't matter you can use your spatula to get the rest out this is the final third of the meat sauce and the final third of everything else so noodles Meat sauce, more mozzarella, All right? I pick it up and show it to you, but you get the you get it. Boom, boom, boom. Last of the cheese sauce. Again, placing it around so you don't have to drag it everywhere. Uh, I think I've learned a lesson. I'm going to start using a timer, a time clock somewhere, so I know how far into the video I am. All right, nice and clean. And we are just going to spread that all over. The other thing I like to do then is buy the sliced mozzarella. You didn't have to buy it, but... It comes pre-sliced, you pay extra for it because somebody sliced it, but get, get a ball of mozzarella and you can slice it yourself with a wire or something. All right, so I can't resist. This is awesome. Ah, phenomenal. And then nothing goes to waste on the homestead here. So there you go. That's your garnish. Here's the best part. The best part is now you put the lid on and you turn it on low for three to four hours. This is gonna cook. I get to now go out on the property and do the other stuff that I need to get done on the homestead. I don't know where I'm looking. Um, but this will actually, um, 
cook over just and people are amazed that they think I do it in an oven. The best part, and hopefully we'll get to it, but I don't know how long the video is. After it's done and cooled a little bit, I take, where are they? Uh-oh, here it is. Here's the best part. I have a storage container. It's roughly the size of my crock pot. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take both ends, you're gonna crimp it together so you can hold it. You lift it up, center it, and like from here down, just let it plop and it will settle. It will fill all the container. And then the best part is you can cut off the plastic and then put the lid on it. And you're, I mean, you wanna let it cool off so that you don't have condensation. I'll show you that in a little bit, but I'm gonna press pause and get to work on the property because now I've got three to four hours. All right, so I'm already 25 minutes into this video, which is way long. I don't know how long it's gonna take, but I cannot resist this sauce. Mm. You're absolutely gonna love the cheese sauce. I can't resist. I know there's a whole egg in here, like, doesn't matter. I'm not going to die. Mm. I think what I'll do is I'll let this cook. I've already explained how to take this out and what you're going to do. So I'll probably just finish it up with a couple of photos of the finished product, hopefully. With that, as always, bring your best and have the best day of your life.